Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. This video is going to be about the fuel system that I made for Ratchet. So I actually started the fuel system on the engine quite a while ago, like two and a half months ago. When I really first started working on the engine for Ratchet, I had to take care of the fuel rails a little bit. And when I did that, I actually made a video about that but I didn't want to finish it until I had finished the fuel system, which now I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump you back to the video I made like two and a half months ago of me making the fuel rails and it's basically the plumbing from the fuel regulator on. And it's a bit wordy, but I think some of it's pretty good. So I'm going to show you that. And then when we come back from that, I'm going to show you what I have made for the fuel system from the fuel cell up to the fuel pressure regulator. So let's start here with the fuel rails. I've got the two fuel rails. I've got this one and this one. This one is the one that the supply line comes into and then there's a crossover tube that carries fuel over to this side as well. You can see on this side I've already started working on this and I've tapped in an AN fitting into the end of the fuel rail. This will be my crossover and this I'll, I'm going to put another AN fitting over here. This will tap in over here so that'll be my crossover and then underneath here is where the supply line ties in. So I've got uh, this. This is a AN6 on this end and quarter inch NPT national pipe thread on this end. These are the fuel injectors that the engine came with from the junkyard and they're already a couple of pieces cracked on the ends here just from me dismantling it and from whatever happened to it in the junkyard. This engine has 180,000 miles on it so who knows what the case is. I'll probably end up replacing these injectors but either way I'm going to use these throughout the whole build because they're kind of good for mock-up so I don't want to break them or anything. Um, that being said, I am going to pry these out with a screwdriver because the first time I take injectors out that have been in for a long time, they're always really hard to get out. So I'm just going to pry a little bit. There we go. I think that little rubber O-ring on there dries out. It gets really hard to pull them out. Once you take them out, they're easy to put back in and then take out. but. I guess if they've been in there for a while, they get really tight. And now this fuel rail has this uh, threaded stud in here that was used for the, the factory piece that went in there. So I'm going to put two nuts on there and back that out. And then I think just from the manufacturing process, they left this piece up here. There's no reason for it to be up there. It doesn't do anything. You can see it's, it's part of this piece here. And when they machined this flat spot for the supply line, it looks like they just machined through it and decided not to take this piece out. So I'm going to roll this stud out and I'm just going to chop this piece off just to clean things up a little bit. Okay, so here's the fuel rail. I've got the stud taken out of there and I, I cut off this little piece just because it didn't need to be there. So what I have is this, this, and this are the ports for the fuel injectors, so I'm not going to touch that. This port and this port are for the fuel. This is the fuel supply line and then this is the crossover that feeds fuel over to the other, other, the other fuel rail. And I want to put this quarter inch NPT fitting in there. And in order to tap this, you need a 7 16 hole. This is a 7 16 drill bit. And when I was thinking if I could do this, I noticed that the factory holes in here are a little bit smaller. Just a little bit. Like I can almost get that in there. So it's almost a 7 16 hole. So I'm not going to drill it out because this is aluminum. If the hole is a little bit too small, 
you can bog through that. I don't know if that makes me a butcher or not, but I just know in aluminum, if the hole's a little bit smaller, you can get through there. So that is great. That's actually what made me decide to go with these fittings once I realized that that's practically the right size I need. It seemed like something I could work with, which was pretty cool. A happy coincidence, let's call it. But the next challenge is, you know, if you look at a tap and on a uh, an NPT tap, it's it's tapered. It's not straight through, so you have to get it in a certain depth. Otherwise, you won't get enough threads engaged on the fitting, and obviously, you don't want that in. You don't want that on anything, but you definitely don't want it on a fuel line. So, originally, I thought maybe I would drill it and drill it a little deeper. But first of all, I can't do that on the supply line because it's it just can't go any deeper this way. And on this line, if I go any farther. Well, actually, technically this one I could go a little bit deeper on, but on the other fuel rail that I already did, this fitting is real close to the fuel injector, and I was afraid it would poke into the fuel injector, and if it did that, that's ruined. That the, that whole rail would be ruined. So what I did is I've got, this is a uh, just a regular tap, and I'm going to use this to start it because it's got the tip that I need to get started. But once I drive this in all the way, and it bottoms out, then I've got another quarter inch NPT tap that I cut about a quarter inch off. So you can see here, once I use this one to get it started, then I'll use this one until this one bottoms out. And I did this on the other fuel rail and it worked out really well. I was able to get this in deep enough that I'm perfectly happy with it. So that's what I'm going to do now. It's a little bit of a precarious system of putting this guy in till it bottoms and then put this guy in till it bottoms and uh, hopefully that should work. Okay, now fast forward a little bit, not a lot. You saw me you saw me tapping these right there. Uh, and I tapped this one. I then took the fuel rail and I cleaned it out with simple green, some degreaser, compressed air, water, a couple different things to get it uh, as clean as I can. I already put this 90 in here. I'll show you when I bolt the rail on how that'll work better for hitting the supply line. And now I've got my little straight for the crossover here. All right, there we go. I'm actually going to take this over and clamp this in the vise so that I can tighten this a little bit more. But then I'm going to take it over and we'll bolt it onto the engine and see how she looks. I forgot to put the fuel injectors in there. <laughs> All right, that's better, right? <laughs> now I've got the fuel injectors in there. I was a little worried for a, a second if this 90 would clear, but it does. Okay, I jumped forward a little bit and I did mount the fuel pressure regulator. Got that sitting right here. My plan is, this is obviously the fuel supply line. It comes in down here, ties into this fuel rail, and then this fuel rail feeds this fuel rail over here. I think I think they call this a dead end or a dead head system, something like that. I mean, 
theoretically you would want the supply in a perfect world you would want the supply line to come in feed the rail at the end feed through loop around go into this feed fuel rail and then this would come out this would go to your pressure regulator and then return to the tank but that that's like if you're right on the edge of your fuel systems which i am not this the fuel system I'm building here has plenty of capacity for this engine, so doing a, a deadhead system like this is not going to be a problem at all. And the way that I'm doing it here is the cleanest, so I'm, I'm actually quite happy with this. So now coming from the fuel pressure regulator back, this is what I have. I have the fuel cell here. I've got my supply line, my return line and this is a vent and what I did is I made a little cartridge that goes in here which has the incoming fuel filter the fuel pump and then the outgoing fuel filter let me show you that right now so here's what I came up with this is a piece that this goes in and actually bolts to the transaxle and then up top here it clamps around the shock absorber mounting posts and what it does is it the fuel comes in here from the fuel cell. This is my pre-filter. This is a 100 micron filter. Then it comes down here, goes through the pump. This is a 255 liter per hour Whirlboro fuel pump. I'll put links in the descriptions for all of these. And then this, these two filters are basically exactly the same, or at least very, very close, except this one is a 30 micron and this one is a 100 micron. This one filters out quite a bit cleans it up before it goes through the pump, but then if it picked anything else up in the pump, or if there were any small pieces left from here, this 30 micron will filter out more than the 100 micron. So this is supposed to really clean it up before it gets to your fuel injectors. But what I wanted to do here with this, because this is where most of the action takes place, I wanted to make a piece that I could just remove from the engine or from the chassis like I have right now, so that you can set this up and this is, how I, this is how I did this. You set all three of these on here. You put these, these are just AN6 elbows on here. You put everything in place nice and loose. All of these clamps nice and loose. And then you go around with your wrenches and you tighten all of these up. And that allows the pieces to move a little bit. So you get everything tightened up nice how you want it on the fittings. Then you can clamp these down to this base plate. And I made these holes a little bit oversized so that you do have room for these to move a little bit as you're tightening these down. So what it allows me to do is take my fuel pump and filters, which would be very difficult to work on if they were down on here, and comfortably work on them on the bench. So I can comfortably set all these up and get it how I want it. And then when I'm ready with this, I can take this piece and I'll do this in a minute, set it down in there, bolt it in place, hook up the power, hook up the fuel lines, and it's good to go. And I think this will be a nice way, because a lot of times fuel pumps go bad, you might have leaks, and it's a very critical part of the system. So I didn't want to have to be struggling, because I'm gonna tell you right now, it's, it's a struggle working on things down in there. And I didn't want to run any of the fuel system like over here because that's, to me, that's like a danger, a danger area where if, if suspension components broke or if there's rocks or anything flying around here, there's a good chance that it could knock stuff loose and generate a leak. So I did want to have the stuff inside this tunnel here so that it would be as protected as possible. But if I did that, I can't really can't really get in there to work on it. It's just it's just too tight, especially if I'm out at a track or something. So I made it removable. It's like a cartridge. I think this is good. The fuel pump is as low as I can get it. It's about three quarters of the way down from the top of the fuel cell. I wish it was a little bit lower. And when I set that up in there, it is a little bit higher. The inlet is a little bit higher. I, I hope that's not a problem. I'll find out because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make any changes. But that's the only thing that I think might be might be a problem at this point. 
But either way, let me throw this in place and then I'll show you what it looks like with everything bolted in there. Okay, so there you go. Hopefully that kind of shows how it is kind of supposed to go in there like a cartridge. I've got, this is the supply line coming from the fuel cell. It goes into the top of the pre-filter. This is the highest point. I'm hoping that's not going to be a problem. I'll find out. It goes through there, down into the fuel pump, which is the lowest point, but it's still a little bit higher than the bottom of the fuel cell. I was trying to get it as low as I could, but I, I have to steer clear of these fittings off the transaxle, so I went as low as I could. Then it comes back up, this 30 micron filter after the fuel pump. Then it goes into this supply line. And that is this supply line, which comes up into the fuel pressure regulator and then goes to the fuel injectors. And then the return line here, which is not connected yet because I ran out of fittings, but from here, it's gonna run down parallel with the supply line. And it will come up here, and then it'll jump across. I'll have clamps holding these two together, and then it'll go into here. Then I'm gonna make a bracket to hold these together so that they're not flopping around like this. But anyways, and then I think you can see that's where I make the fuel pump connections. They're not the easiest things in the world to get to, but they're not, they're not too bad. I was going to hardwire that and then make a plug, but I thought, you know, a plug is just another point of failure, and those are just screw terminals, so they're really not too bad to get to. And then you can see there where that plate bolts onto the top of the transaxle. Trans the transaxle had a couple of extra mounting places, so you had some options, and that was one that I did not end up using, so I just used that for the fuel pump mounting bracket. And then I went with hose clamps to secure the top here because with the support on the bottom from the transaxle, this only had to be here to just hold it in place so it doesn't vibrate and I didn't want to weld or make any major brackets onto this shock tower um, just because it's not necessary and I don't want to take any strength away from this if I don't have to because this is holding the bypasses so this shock tower is going to be under quite a bit of stress. Okay guys that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you what I did for the fuel system. It's probably a little bit wordy but I really wanted to show some of it. To me the fuel system is one of the most important or crucial parts of the vehicle. Number one, obviously, if it's not working, your Baja's not working. But number two, there's so much potential for damage with fire and all that, that I always try to do a really good job with the fuel system so that I'm comfortable that it's a good design and it's not gonna be easy for it to leak or anything like that. That's why I, on this, I went with the AN6 fuel line fittings on Mahler. I used the factory push-on, those hard poly lines. Those do scare me a little bit because you just push them on. I, I mean, that, it just, it, that feels scary. So that I'm always a little bit nervous with that on Mauler. So on Ratchet, I knew for a fact I wanted everything to be AN6. And that's what this is. Everything on here is AN6. So I'm pretty confident with that. <laughs> we'll see when I actually put fuel in there and pressurize it, how it goes. But... I'm, I'm pretty confident with this. So either way, I'm rambling again. That's it for this video. I hope you guys like it. I hope it's helping you with whatever you happen to be working on. And I, help, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.